Welcome to a video where I tell you what to do because it's for your own good. But it's more than that, because it's also sponsored by Nerdarchy. But first, I'm gonna argue why you should flavor your games. You know damn well how boring it is to play a wizard who shoots fire from his fingertips. Fucking every wizard can do that. It's fire. Flavoring is the beautiful and creative act of describing the cause of your ability's effect. It's crossing that boring-ass bridge from I use my class ability to I do damage and hurt the enemy. The book provides examples of every monster, spell, attack, ability, weapon, and item that it provides. Now that's all fine and dandy, but that's from the book. Those monsters and spells don't belong to us, and they were given to be adopted and adapted, not simplified. Doing fire damage is my first example because a burning explosion is the trademark of magic. Here's how burning hands goes down. As you hold your hands with thumbs touching and fingers spread, a thin sheet of flames shoots from your outstretched fingertips. Each creature in a 15-foot cone must make a dexterity saving throw. A creature takes 3d6 fire damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. Most of that is just descriptive details, but let's break it down to what the spell's confines are. There's a cone, something that they have to reflexively dodge, and fire damage. Fire damage, at its core, is what happens when something is consumed to use as energy for a chemical reaction. Now that we've got those building blocks, here's a few ideas to make the same thing happen, but the way I want to make it happen. A monk focuses her key on nearby enemies, reading their vitals and their breath that just barely reaches her. With an assertion of force, she commands the oxygen they inhale to bond with their flesh, literally burning their lungs from the inside out. An inventor cranks the hand of a music box, which then launches a spray of tiny fireworks that form hundreds of minuscule explosions on their target's skin. A druid ushers dry, thorny roots to explode from the ground and ignite themselves, burning all local creatures as a result of their sudden conflagration. Really, all I'm trying to say is a creative description helps make your characters feel like you made them. Every failure or success that you roll is suddenly in your hands to describe, and the whole game feels a little more personal. Before I tell Dungeon Masters that they should do this too, players can abuse their creativity and try to cause additional effects. The only rule for flavoring that you should ever have is to just not do this. If your arms of Hadar are sentient chains you wrap around yourself, they're still the arms of Hadar. You can't change the damage type, and you can't have an additional ability where they also grapple. That's what we call cheating. As for Dungeon Masters, here's a little trick I use to throw off my players. Take a picture of a monster, then take an element or a trait. Here's a little template that I use for inspiration. Then, as a final step, pick a stat block from the book that has no relation to either of the things you just picked. Suddenly you have a monster no one at the table has ever seen before, and has unpredictable abilities that they can't metagame around. Strip a couple traits that don't make sense, and give it one or more to make the creature seem entirely designed from the ground up, when really you spent maybe two minutes on D&D Beyond. I've used the Lost as a giant turtle monster with eel arms, the Elder Tempest as a leviathan, and a bunch of demons or tiny fey monsters as slightly more unique beasts. If you're not a spellcaster, you can still do whatever the heck you want, just as long as you don't break the confines of your abilities or your weapons. Barbarians don't just have to get mad to gain their rage features. Have them drink a vial of a hideous brew that transforms them into Bane from Batman. Give them some anime familiar that grants them a burst of power and protection when they need it. I like to get weird with it and make even the simplest classes interesting, like having your fighter's maneuvers not actually come from your fighter. But in fact, there are four tiny men who live up their sleeves. The major issue that a lot of people bring up is the fact that descriptions eat up table time. And to an extent, I understand that that can be an issue. I've seen people straight up take like 10 minutes just to say, My rogue trickster during this conversation reaches behind his back and twirls a hidden dart, like that time from that movie that another character does that. Then he dips it into a tiny purple vial, like that truth serum that the stuff from Ant-Man that they use. Do you remember that? After chuckling to himself, he tosses the dart up and catches it in his other hand like that part from Game of Thrones, but also nothing like that part from Game of Thrones. Then he throws it up at the guy in front of him. 
As the poison seeps into his veins, kind of like that Spider-Man venom, he has to make a wisdom save. And the DM just gets to sit there like, what the f*** did you just do? And you find out that he just cast Charm Person, and you want to beat him over the head with a tire iron. So try and keep your descriptions confined to the game. Don't run an attack over like 10 to 15 seconds of an explanation, and make sure that everyone knows what the hell you're doing. I just wanted to rant that being creative is cool, and I wanted to throw out a bunch of examples that I haven't gotten to use. So this is a shorter video, I guess. But more are on the way. Now a word from me, for the sake of our sponsor. The ridiculously successful Kickstarter book Out of the Box Encounters came and went too dang fast, and a lot of us didn't get to grab that beautiful book. If you didn't know, this book boasts a bunch of pre-made, easy to use, or implement encounters that you can throw into your game at the drop of a hat. But now this cluster of encounters is not only backing up for grabs at Kickstarter prices, but it also has every friggin' stretch goal achieved, so it's twice as big and full of new encounters, amazing art, and a lot more. All the tiers are open again, so you can go grab these nerdy dice, fantasy ground modules, the big fancy packs, and big ol' art prints like maps and stuff. Go grab a copy before the pledge manager closes and the price goes up to a reasonable amount. Then come back and watch another video.